the presidential campaign for Vice President Harris thought it was a great idea to use Megan the Stallion to pander to black people so she could get their vote? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about it. Welcome to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we get this video out to more people just like you and me. Now, Vice President Harris had her first big rally in Atlanta, Georgia, and I guess someone, whoever is in charge of her campaign, thought it was a great idea to use Megan the Stallion and Quavo, the rapper, to bring out the crowd because Kamala Harris does not bring crowds, by the way. She does not attract a huge crowd when doing rallies. Okay, we know who does, but you know, that's a whole nother video, right? And so in this video, we're gonna cover a couple of things. There was some statements that the vice president made uh, and then the whole Megan Thee Stallion cringe stuff. And uh, we'll talk about some of the other things that need to be debunked. Let's take a look at the first one. Donald Trump, on the other hand, has been talking a big game about securing our border, but he does not walk the walk. Or as my friend Quavo would say, he does not walk it like he talks it. Now hold up. I got a question for you. You let me know if I'm, if I'm crazy. Does she actually talk this way? Like, when's the last time you heard her use that voice? Like, the way that she's speaking as if she's trying to sound black, right? Or she's trying to sound like she's from the South, because not all black people talk the same, right? But she's trying to sound like she's from Atlanta, Georgia, and she's not. I just, I mean, when are we going to wake up, right? Uh, yeah, I just... Come on, man. What, what, what's going on, right? Uh, let's play this other clip. Donald Trump does not care about border security. He only cares about himself. And when I am president, I will work to actually solve the problem. So here is my pledge to you. As president, I will bring back the border security bill that Donald Trump killed, and I will sign it into law and show Donald Trump what real leadership looks like. President Trump does not care about border security. Did we forget? that the entire government tried to sabotage his border security plan, which was to build the wall. Do we recall that? Do we recall how he, the Mexican military started to secure the border and supported the whole catch and release? Did we forget about that? Did we forget about that? No other president in the last 20 years had the lowest apprehension numbers than President Trump. Yeah, of course. They, again, what, what they're betting on is that no one's going to do their research. They're just going to take everything someone says at face value. Obviously, President Trump is who he is. He's going to go out there and he's going to say whatever the hell he wants to say. Sometimes that works for him and sometimes that works against him, of course. And so what they are betting on is that President Trump will continue to speak the way that he's been speaking and he's never going to really touch on policy. And they're just going to keep spitting lies and the American people will just eat it up. That's what they're banking on. And I hope I hope that when the debate comes, he finds a way to be truly surgical with sticking to the policies when it comes to her. I, I hope. I, I really do. Um, but this is what they're going to do. This is what she's going to do. She's going to keep lying over and over. And so this brings me to the, you know, me debunking the first thing that was said, the border security. Under her watch, they had what people are estimating almost 20 million people cross the border. You guys have to understand, the most that crossed under the Trump administration was three million in four years. Three million in four years. They had three million in one year, the Biden administration. So, you know, 
hey, do your research, of course. Look it up yourself. But this is absolutely uh, pandering. And God, that voice. Come on, guys. That voice. I don't know where she's getting that from. Um, let's take a look at this, actually. OK, so what you guys are seeing, which I played in the beginning of this is someone showing that people were walking out and it was like like almost 15 minutes into her speech now her speech was very short it was like 23 minutes or something like that so pretty much halfway through her speech people were already leaving and if you notice if i rewind this for a second if you notice you see how the stands are are empty in the middle and there's you know there's some gaps there and things like that the reason why is because remember there was pretty much like a megan the stallion show before she came on stage right so there's a lot of people that just actually came out for megan the stallion they didn't really come out for her and so that's where i'm i'm saying like whoever's running her campaign don't depend on entertainers <laughs> to bring a crowd Right. I mean, not at your rallies, your rallies is like your hardcore fans, you know, but hey, who am I? I don't I don't run campaigns. I just use common sense. But anyways, um, this brings us to the other problem that we ran into because she used Megan the Stallion to attract a crowd. Right. Uh, which is this. OK, so Megan the Stallion. Right. So she performs. Um, she dresses the way that she dressed. OK, so you pretty much got some hoochie mamas out there. Uh, being ratchet, doing the whole twerking situation on stage at a freaking rally. At a rally, guys. So, yeah, I, I, I guess they're using her to attract black votes, which I find to be funny. Um, I find it to be actually embarrassing. And um, just it's not a good image. And Megan the Stallion is not a great representative of, of the black community. Let's just call it what it is. Cardi B, Megan the Stallion. If you listen to their music, are you kidding me? Would you let your daughter listen to that stuff? Like it's it's ridiculous. OK, but and look at their caption they put on this video. This is from the campaign, by the way. This is their ex account. So uh, my ladies in the crowd, if you want to keep loving your body, you know who to vote for. And you see how they, they oh my God, they, they just extreme exaggeration, right? Um, if you want to keep loving your body, you know who to vote for. Okay, uh, who you vote for should have nothing to do with whether you love your body or not. You should just inherently love your body, right? Like I, I would imagine. And if you don't love your body because you're obese, then you, know, you might want to look into that. But hey, that's a whole nother video. Um, I, I just think that... Um, Th this is just sad. I mean, what is going on here, right? Like, what are they thinking? You know, and this is what what we've come to is where people think entertainment is going to get it done. So, you know, who had something to say about this? None other than President Trump. Let's take a look at what he said. I agree with him on this. He said crazy Kamala Harris voted the worst vice president in American history, needed a concert to bring people into the Atlanta arena. And they started leaving five minutes into her speech. I don't need concerts or entertainers. He sure doesn't. And I just have to make America great again. I love that. I love that. I really do believe sooner or later she's going to have to start talking about people and what she's going to do for them besides the whole abortion thing. Right. And again, like I told you guys, I don't think they will. I think they're just going to continue to use the same messaging because I think they they're just delusional for some reason. Um, but anyways, I digress. Yeah, you, you shouldn't need a concert to bring people out. Right. And by the way, Atlanta, which is the city with the most black people. You, what, what do you mean? You, you can't even uh, fill up the entire stadium. You, you can't have the whole streets blocked off and shut down. I mean, like when people go to a Trump rally. They're waiting like six to eight hours before he even shows up. They're waiting. They're tailgating. They're they're having a barbecue like they're outside like that. This isn't about really measuring people's rallies. Right. But uh, this is about how stupid I think whoever's running the campaign really is when it comes to doing stuff like this. Like, but hey, what, what do I know? I, I don't run campaigns. You know, I'm that's not my expertise. Uh, but, you know, I do have some level of common sense. And I believe that if you're really trying to bring the black community out and really uh, galvanize all of them, 
um, you might want to try to find a message that all of them will actually relate to. And I don't believe all black people really relate to Megan Thee Stallion. I think there's a lot of black people that actually despise her and her music and her lyrics and all that stuff she's doing on the stage. Hey, it's a bad look. You know, no one, people are not stupid. Okay. Listen, she's going to have her delusional fans, just like everybody. Everybody has their hardcore fans. There's no question about it. So we know where she's going to have that. We also know that she's in the beginning of this honeymoon stage, right? So once the DNC takes place, which is like August 17th and probably another week after that, then reality is truly going to set in for her and the rest of the country is really going to see her for who she is. Right now, the media is working overtime to get people to see her in a positive way. And at the same time, they are working overtime to make President Trump look terrible, you know, and they've been doing that since day one, of course. But as I wrap up this video today, I want to say this to you guys. From a mindset point of view, I really do believe when you're operating from a place of being fake and not really being true to yourself, this is who you become. You become a Kamala Harris where you start talking the way that you normally wouldn't talk, right? You try to switch up your accent to fit in, right? You start making irrational choices like bringing Megan the Stallion to open up for you as if that's like the smartest way to get black people to vote for you, I guess. I don't know. And then you also find yourself in a position where you're not really getting a lot of turnout like you claim. And so you have to pretty much come up with lies. And so you start pushing these lies like, oh, it's a sold out arena. You know, we had so many people that showed up. You start pushing these lies like I had 100 or 200,000 people on Zoom and Zoom broke down. And, and, you, and then the media is behind you. Like, think about it. Why is the media trying so hard? They're trying really hard because this isn't who she is. They didn't have to try hard for Barack Obama. That is who he was. He's just he he's a naturally talented politician. She isn't. You know, like it is what it is. But hey, that's my mindset. What's yours? What do you guys think about this whole dog and pony show with Megan the Stallion opening up for her? And people still left 15 minutes in, especially after Megan Thee Stallion stopped performing. Um, and even during her speech, most of it didn't even make sense. She made the claim that she's going to be now leading the border security when she had four years to do it. Yeah. OK, got it. Well, hey, that's all I got to say. Thank you so much for checking out the video today. Uh, hey, stay grateful, stay focused and stay true. Peace. <laughs>